Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Headway School for Giftedness uh, free webinar. And the Headway School for Giftedness is honored to have an esteemed uh, speaker for this morning uh, who will talk about strategies in behavioral interventions at home. Uh, by the way, my name is Al. I'm the principal of Headway School for Giftedness, and we are so happy to see everyone uh, this morning. So if you have any questions uh, during the webinar, uh, feel free to message in the comment box and uh, we will be entertaining most of the questions um, after the talk of our speaker for this morning. So to introduce our esteemed speaker uh, today, uh, he is a graduate of uh, BS Psychology at the Pamantasa ng Lungsod ng Manila with a Master of Science degree in Clinical Psychology from DLSU. He also studied Applied Behavior Analysis at the Florida Institute of Technology, USA. He has about two decades of experience in special education and uh, behavioral therapy and is an owner and behavioral consultant at Bridges Child Development Program. Let us all welcome our speaker for today, uh, Mr. Mark David Magbanwa. So please hold on. Uh, uh, Sir Mark will be here in a while. Um, good morning, Sir Al. Good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, first I'd like to, to thank you for, uh, for having me here. Uh, I'd like to thank Pomluz as well and the entire Headway School for Giftedness for giving me this opportunity. Well, to be honest, you know, Sir Al, uh, I, I, I felt a little anxious in the beginning because, uh, I mean, yes, you've asked me if I've done this uh, in the past. Yes, I've, I've done this in in a number of times uh but again um having this webinar i mean it means that i i, I wouldn't be able to see the audience's reaction so you know it, it, it's kind of uh uh different doing a, a live conference a live talk with with a lot of people in front of me so yeah um uh when when you ask me about this topic uh, of course, I mean, I, I felt and I thought that it's very timely uh, since we are facing this pandemic. And, you know, like uh, most of us are bound to just stay home. Uh, you know, most of us would work from home. Some others would still go out. But I mean, you know, the, like the, the, the movements are very limited. And uh, of course, we have to stay with our kids most of the time. I mean, like, 24 seven, you know, playing with them, doing their homeworks with them, um, doing online classes with them. So I, I, I thought what would be the best topic for us to discuss? And uh, the best way for me to do it is to actually ask the parents myself. Um, so for about uh, 10 parents, I mean, believe it or not, like eight out of 10, answered almost the same thing. Um, and, and my question was really, what is the most common concern that uh, they are facing with, they are dealing on an everyday basis with their kids? Um, I don't know if we can ask some parents online. Is that something that we can do, Sir Al? So anyway, um, I believe that that this question can we can we Sarah? Okay, uh, maybe we can hear some comments from the parents. Okay, so feel free uh, because we want to make it an interactive webinar. So feel free uh, to comment if you have anything to say about the talk, or if you have uh, any questions. Yeah. So going back, I've, I've asked 
for about 10 parents of what would be the most common concern that they are facing, that they are dealing with their kids on a daily basis. I mean, it's not just during this pandemic. I mean, this could be in general. So let's uh, wait for some questions, I think. Okay, so we have uh, some viewers from Pangasinan, uh, from South Cotabato. Uh, so welcome everyone to our webinar. So feel free to uh, ask any questions or chat here if uh, you want to interact with our speaker so we can talk and converse with you in the webinar. So I think we can move on. Yeah, okay. Somewhere. So let's give it a go. Um, the most common concern that uh, these parents told me is this. My child does not listen to me. And, and you know, I mean, sometimes it, it makes us wonder. Uh, we've seen kids uh, perform. We've seen kids follow instructions from other people. But by the time they come home, I mean, sometimes they just wouldn't listen. You know, like I've seen parents get sad about it. I've, I've seen parents whine. And trust me, it's not just kids who whine. Parents sometimes would whine too. Some would cry over it. Uh, some would get really worried. And others get pissed and even get more pissed. And until such time that it cracks their brain out and, you know, they don't know what to do. And uh, believe it or not, we've experienced the same thing. I mean, it's not just because we're therapists. It not, it's not just because we're teachers. Is that, you know, we can automatically make your child listen to us. Of course that. I mean, it doesn't work like that, especially in the beginning. So having said, there's this one word that I want to share with you guys. Um, for you out there who's watching this video and, you know, trying to help you understand, uh, uh, trying to make you relate and, and, you know, really think about why some of your kids or some of the kids would just not listen to you at home, especially at home. And it's the word contingency. So now this sounds very technical to me, but uh, don't worry, over the next few slides, I I'll try to make it as simple as I can. Uh, so that, you know, we can all share the same language. Uh, we can, it's something that we can easily understand and, and apply on our daily lives. So, um, so what really is this word? Contingency, it explains the if-then conditions that set the relationship between a certain behavior and its consequence. So I would like you to, to focus on the words that are highlighted, the if and then. So here they are, if and then. If a certain behavior has been displayed or observed, a certain consequence may follow. So again, uh, there are other words that are highlighted as well. It's the behavior. And it's the consequence. So I remember my mom when, when, when I was very young, she was still living then. You know, she would always tell me that if you take a nap in the afternoon, then I will let you go out after and, and uh, you can go play ball with your friends. So, I mean, that kind of gets stuck with me, uh, that kind of condition that, that she said. Because, I mean, like, there's the if in there. If, if I uh, take a nap, then I'll be able to go out. But if I don't, then I'll get stuck at home for a day. So that's how simply the contingency is of the if and then. So let's first discuss some ways to effectively establish the behavior consequence contingency. Number one, know your goal. Uh, of course, I mean, you would want to know what 
are the things that you want to work on for your child. You want to know uh, what are the skills that you want to develop for your child. Um, you know, you have to prioritize. You want to know your priorities. Uh, you want to know what uh, what should be the result of, of what you're teaching them. And uh, you want to set him up for for success. And by, by setting him up for success, you have to start small. Starting small, it could mean uh, asking them something that they can already do just for you to, to, to provide that feeling of, uh, hey, yes, you've done it. And then you can give out a consequence. So uh, let's say, for example, if, if uh, your task is, is to make your child count one to 100, maybe you can start asking him to count one to 20. And then you continue with 21 to 40, 41 to 60. So starting small, that means that uh, the likelihood of, of you getting a successful response is, is there already. So uh, first, know your goal. Second, start small. So that when you're having that kind of uh, successful responses, you can easily offer readily available rewards. So again, uh, these rewards, remember that these rewards are, are responsible. The, your rewards, your reinforcement, these are responsible for increasing, for teaching, for maintaining, and for keeping a behavior that you want your child to display. So if, 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 uh, if you ask your child to do something or to behave in a certain way, and then that behavior is being rewarded, is being reinforced, then it's more likely that that behavior that you've just asked is going to occur in, 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 in the future. And if the child uh, faces the same situation. Um, number four is that uh, you have to make yourself understood. Um, we just have to be clear with, with what we're expecting from our child. And at the same way, uh, we also have to be clear on what our child is expecting from us. Uh, so it's, it, it always works two ways. So you make it clear to your child uh, what you want from them, and you also make it clear what they can get out from it. And uh, the last one is, of course, we always have to be consistent. Um, being consistent would mean that if it's a no now, it can't be a yes after five seconds. Uh, if it's a no now, it can't be a yes when they threw a tantrum on you. It can't be a yes if uh, they cried out loud like it's the end of the world. So yeah, if it's a no now, it's, it's never gonna be a yes. Uh, but again, there are some conditions where you, know, you may want to adjust it and, and make sure that your child would always get a yes. And again, going back, that's, uh, that's uh, when you know your goal, when you start small, uh, the rewards are ready, um, you make yourself clear and you just have to implement it and, and, and be consistent. So let's set some examples. Uh, let's hear the first one. We can do it verbally. So like what I've said earlier, if you take a nap, then you go out after. If you finish your lunch, you can have a slice of chocolate cake. Make your bed, clean up your toys, and then you can join us for movies later. So I can tell you hundreds of if and then conditions verbally. But the question is, does that really make sense to us? I mean, like I, 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 I've intentionally did not put anything on the screen right now. I mean, because I, I want to emphasize on, on 
giving you the verbal conditions. So, I mean, at some point, it wouldn't really make sense, you know, if I just keep on talking and and you know expect you to 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 remember it. I mean, maybe for 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 us adults who has a higher functioning level when it comes to the language and comprehension, yes, maybe we, it, it will work. But uh, what what about those kids who has, let's say, a limited language? What about those kids who has, um, let's say, who has not fully developed their comprehension yet? Um, so, uh, what else? What about those kids who have very poor attending skills that uh, it just seems that uh, whatever you tell them, they just don't listen, they, they, they don't follow your instructions. So what are we going to do now? So what if, what if we write it? Let's say on a sticky note. So here it is. Brush your teeth. Just stick it somewhere. I'll read your story. So here's an example of uh, of a, a, an if then condition where I'm using a textual prompt. So I'm writing it on a sticky note. It says, "Brush your teeth, and then I'll read you a story after." So let's say you're tucking your child in bed. And then you know he you know that uh, he he likes to 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 listen to a story like a bedtime story. So you're making it a condition that okay if you brush your teeth, and then I'll read you a story. So you know you can just post it in uh, next to his bed or next to to the bathroom just for him to get reminded that okay if I brush my teeth then I'll hear a story. If I don't brush my teeth then my mom's not gonna read the story to me um next on a notice board so i have i have another props So here, uh, this is something that you can see in the school. Submit your homework on time, and then you can skip your quiz. So, you know, it, it serves as a reminder. Uh, in the school, for example, or it could be at your house as well, it's the same thing. You just have to change the, the, the conditions that you're setting and, and the consequence that you're giving in. So. Yeah, if, if you don't, if you submit your homework late, then that means that you'll be taking the quiz. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's up for the kids, it's up for the students to, to, to really respond to it. Um, so yeah, third one, a to-do list. So this is something that, uh, you know, you, you can normally see posted on the fridge, or let's say hanging on 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 same notice board, but you know there's there's a to-do list. So I hope you can see it. I'll read it to you anyway. So things to do. Do the laundry, wash the car, finish your homework, and then pizza for snack. 
So um, now it has a series of things for the child to do. So this could be a lot, you know, doing the laundry, washing the car, finish your homework, and then you can have pizza for snack. Otherwise, you miss one of this activity. Otherwise, you won't be having the pizza. So that's how simply the concept is. It just gets complicated maybe on, on, on how we, we put out our demands, put out the tasks. So again, by doing it effectively, we have to know our goal. Uh, I'm just having a recap of how to effectively uh, um, establish that contingency. Uh, we have to know our goal. We have to, to start small. We have to get ready with our rewards that you know that, that, that we can easily provide. Um, what's next? We have to make ourselves understood, and the last one we have to be consistent. So there's another example. It's a, a text message. Let's see about that. So a text message could be something like this. See, I just got a text message. One message received. Let's read it. Finish your talk and I'll get you McDonald's. Yeah. Let's hope it's true. So let's see. So yeah. Here are the things that, uh, that, that here are examples of, of, of having um, ways that we can establish the if and then conditions or the behavior consequence contingency, uh, doing it verbally. Now we're trying to write it so that it, it gives us a little bit of reminder, but uh, there's gonna be more to it. So now I'm gonna give you real life examples. So, this first picture, I hope it's clear. Uh, it's it's for a boy who would just refuse to complete his homework at home. So and 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 other activities that that are related to to the lessons and everything. So he's he's getting some follow up classes uh, in one center, and it's all about math. So. Me as a therapist would come there and, and help him complete and finish those tasks. Although he would know what to do already. I mean, he knows the math. He just doesn't want to do it. So if you see that whiteboard, uh, there are three things that I've asked him to do. First is the basic thinking. Uh, then we'll get a five-minute break. So if you can notice, a five-minute break can be included as part of the task. So it's something that he can already do. It's something that, that uh, he would look forward to. Uh, the next one is the critical thinking. And in the end, you'll see a box with three stars that says VR. It's the, it's the virtual reality. Um, this boy loves to play video games. You know, he would just get on his tablet, he would get on his PlayStation, and you know, he'd wear this, this virtual reality, the VR, and, and play his game. So it was newly bought uh, as a gift from, from his parents. But uh, again, when I started working with this boy, you know, I was telling the parents that, you know, let's, let's use it as, as a reward for him, uh, contingent on completing the tasks that we're asking him to do. Uh, anyway, that's the first concern. The child is not able to, to work on his task. Uh, the child is not able to independently complete complete the tasks that are being given to him. Um, so that's at home and, and at school too. Uh, so this next picture, uh, it's a daily contract. I mean, it, it's, it's from this school. Uh, we've cut the day into three parts. So if you notice, there are three boxes in there. Uh, one part would mean two subjects. Uh, so the first one is math. The second one is Filipino. So in one subject, we've put out two targets. One is, let me read it, circle graph. So that's their activity for the day. The second one is raising of hand when he wants to say something because he would normally blurt out answers. Uh, under the Filipino subject, it says here, read tambalang pangungusap. 
and then uh, talk to teacher. I can't really read. I, I was the one who wrote it, but I can't really read what I've written. Uh, but it, yeah, it's it's something. It's it's general classroom behavior that that uh, that uh, we've been expecting the child to do, and in return, the child was uh, was was given the chance to choose on which reward he would want to work for, and all he wanted was ten pieces of paper, because this boy absolutely he draws very well. I mean, he drew me one time, and and he was into. Uh, plants and zombies. I looked like a zombie when he drew me, but I mean, like it, it's really good. It's like a work of an an artist. Uh, I couldn't find it. I wanted to show it to you, but I mean, if I find it, I, I can post it somewhere. So that's another example. And here's another one. Uh, so there are seven tasks that uh, we've written for the child to do. Actually, six. The last one is is the reward. So number one is poo poo. So you know, I mean, in in other kids, we really have to put, let's say, this kind of things that they have to do, like going for poo poo, making poop, uh, on their schedule, because you know he he wouldn't just tell us, you know, he would keep on missing it. So we have to put it in a schedule. Uh, number two is playing with Achi for like five minutes. Uh, number three is the baunan, so it means that he has to prepare his his lunch box or his snack box, because number four he has to go for an OT session, uh, an occupational therapy. Uh, number five is IV. I can't really remember what IV stands for. The number six is where I come in is the recall. So we try to recall what happened during the day. The mom helps me monitor uh, uh, what happen through the day the progress and if, if we were able to complete all the tasks that we've set and then number seven uh it's the airplane it's it's the reward it's uh it's uh it's it's a lego airplane that uh uh we're we're building on uh for days already and and uh you know it just motivates him that you know we we, we do the lego uh airplane part by part day by day every time he completes the task that we're giving to him so these are all examples of of having uh, uh us trying to establish the contingency of doing something and then getting something out of it through text through written text so i'll give you uh more real life examples so that you know we we, we can we can see it clearly on how uh, we can apply it to our kids at home so if you see this number one no touching of nose no hitting although i would rather put out a behavior target where it's clear for the child what to do but again since this this child he's a teenager already has, has a very limited language so I have to write it in a way that he would understand. Um, empty his pockets because he would always, you know, put little things in his pockets. Eat breakfast and wash the dishes and wash your bike. So if you see on the box below, uh, with a star, that's the reward. It's the LCC. LCC is like, uh, it, it, it's like the, it, it's a mall in, in, in Bicol, in Legaspi. So before I would go there on the weekends and, and, and provide therapy for, for these kids. So yeah, like LCC is like the SM of vehicle, but now they already have the SM in there. So, I mean, he just wants to go there. I mean, that's what he chose. That's, that's I mean, like LCC is like Disneyland to him. And there he was washing his bike. And, uh, you know, it's, it's something that he wouldn't do naturally. Uh, we we have to tell him, we have to make him do it, you know, and, and make sure that he understands that, that uh, there are certain ways that he needs to do first before he actually reaches the reward. And that's us. You know, we went to LCC. It's, it's, uh, we were riding in, uh, what do you call that? Like a tuk, no, it's not a tuk-tuk. It's, uh, 
what do you call it in Bicol? It's a uh, like a pedicab, a bicycle with with a sidecar in it. So pajak, yeah, it's a pajak. So all he wanted was was to 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 get a five peso pen as a reward. So imagine that, you know, I mean, him understanding that, okay, the only way that I can get that, that five peso pen that I wanted is, is for me to follow all those things that, that have been said. And, you know, he felt that it's not really bad. There's another example. Uh, still the same boy. Number one, no touching of nose. Number two, no scratching of wound. Number three, fix the bedroom. And number four, say sorry to Tia. I think he did something to Tia, uh, his aunt, that uh, we wanted him to, 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 to say sorry for. And in return, he'll get a haircut and will eat show mine. And there he was, fixing his bed, which uh, is not really part of, of uh, something that who he would normally do. And, you know, by us putting it out as, as uh, a task for him, contingent on a reward, which is the haircut and the shomai, he would willingly do it. And there, we we're having a haircut. I didn't get a haircut because, I mean, there's really nothing to cut. But, uh, you know, he loves going out. He loves, you know, doing this kind of stuff outside. Uh, uh, I didn't get a picture of us you know, eating shawmai, but I mean, like, I'm trying to show you the concept of, of how, how powerful the contingency is on how we can start to, to control the environment, the kids, to behave in a certain way, only if we make it contingent to something rewarding, to something uh, uh, motivating for them to work for. So, I mean, so now that uh, we've seen verbal conditions establishing the if and then relationship, written text establishing the if and then condition. So I think you're having the idea now of, of uh, which one you would prefer. But that's just not it. I mean, it, I'm not just asking you to, to, to choose between the verbal and the written. There is another one. What more would you think? What more would it do if we make it visual? I mean, I, visual, I mean uh, uh, picture, through pictures. So let's, let's have a little discussion in the beginning. So number one, it makes you plan ahead. Well, it does not only give you as a parent clear pictures in your head on what's happening, it gives the child specifically on, uh, you know, like visually clear to them of what's going on. You know, like uh, uh, this is the first thing that I have to do, this is the next, and this is what I'm gonna get. So I'm gonna show you some, some sample examples later um so they, they they get to understand it clearly if it's presented visually next is that it reminds everybody uh you know if if you put it somewhere that everybody can see um anywhere inside the house let's say uh, your sister or let's say the tita, the tito, who passes by and sees that, that visual representation uh, of the things that the child has to complete. You know, they can easily remind the child. And, and, and uh, again, it's, 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 it's a very straightforward reminder. You know, you see it in pictures, sometimes it doesn't really need words. And all they need to do is to point at it and, and the child will easily remember that, okay, yes, I have, I have to do it pala. So number three, it keeps it keeps the motivation very high. Um, um, like for us adults too, uh, I'll try to put it, uh, you know, like like on, on, on the daily life. Like uh, we see something that we really like in those advertisements, for example, and 
you know it 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 reminds us to work harder you know for us to to get it for us to 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 save up for it so we can get it in the end so it's the same concept number four it gives sense of accomplishment so let's say uh you've put out let's say a series of pictures for the child to do and you know when he sees it that okay i've done this number one we can take it off i've done this number two we can take it off and you know he can start to see that i'm getting closer and closer to my goal i'm getting closer and closer to reaching my reward so imagine how how that how good of a feeling is that you know like like uh, uh telling yourself that, hey i've done it i've accomplished it and the last one it develops independence uh, because uh, time will come that uh, we won't be needing these pictures anymore i mean uh you know i mean as long as we've we've done it right in the beginning we've set that kind of, of contingency um they start to do it independently they start to know that okay if i do this i'll do this and then i can get this so to give more sense to it i'll give you some examples that that we happen to see on our daily lives so i mean we've seen this a lot in school you know like putting out a schedule like uh uh we have the snack time we have the play time um we'll have the math english filipino lunch and then let's say uh, a home time so i mean sometimes we don't really need to explain it to these kids uh but uh when they see that okay it's play time then all you need to do is to finish the schedule on top and then i'll get to play and then after that i'll, I'll get to sit and do my my uh, worksheet for example and then it's home time so you see that because again uh as, as easy as as we can say it they wouldn't get home they wouldn't you know get to to play with their friends during their free time if they don't finish their 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 worksheet for example here's another one you've seen this in in your therapy centers you've seen this in in some of this you know we we have this at home uh you've put out little pictures of what your child is expected to do so in this picture it's making bed get dressed brushing teeth you know brushing your hair and at the last part it's it says part so the child would clearly know that unless he finishes all these tasks he wouldn't be able to reach that part time so uh that's another example and here's another one uh so if you can see there's a picture of Jollibee because that Jollibee is, is oh, I love this girl. This Jollibee is, is something that this girl would, would really work for. You know, she loves Jollibee. I mean, who wouldn't love Jollibee? I love the chicken joy. And, and you know, and, and we just have to set some few tasks for her to complete within the day. And then he'll get the Jollibee after. So that's kind of... Uh, uh, a motivation for her and uh so let me ask you now uh <clears throat> there's this one now that we are on the pandemic uh of course sometimes we have to go to to the supermarket to buy our essentials to buy the groceries you know we have to go to the pharmacy sometimes we have to go to the mall and get something um there's something that we would always see every day every time we have to come in uh and and it's it's uh uh making it contingent you know us doing something contingent on us, us getting in so it's this one it's the same concept no fat no face mask no face shield no entry so it's it's the same concept you know and and you know let's say the securities or the mall they they didn't really have to tell us they didn't have to write it for us all we need to 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 do is to look at that picture and then we know what to do because otherwise we won't be getting in and what happens to us we follow yes we, we wear the face mask we wear the face shield for safety reasons for for our health reasons uh 
So it's the same concept that we face every day. So why not try to, to you know, to, to, to apply it to our kids as well? So this next example is uh, a happened in real life. Um, I, I want to call it riding in tandem. And uh, to establish the contingency, we use a visual representation. We call it the contingency map. So I hope you can, it's an old picture. I hope you can clearly see it. Anyway, I'm going to be discussing it to you. So if you can see two boxes on top. Okay, notice the boy on the left first. So there's a boy. There are two boxes on top. The first box says homework finished by 5 p.m. So the clock shows and points at 5 p.m. There's a picture of his book and and uh, the pencil equals so that's me and him riding the Vespa riding my bike so that's that's what he wanted uh, you know he, uh, they live in 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 a gated community you know in a street where there are really no cars passing by very seldom so you know it's it's safe for us to to ride few rounds of bike uh, otherwise I won't be able I won't offer it to him if it's unsafe and notice the two boxes below uh, it says homework not finished by 5 p.m. so the clock points a quarter after five and the picture of the homework book and the, the pen and the next box is equal to just me riding my bike. So that means that if he does not finish his his homework by 5 p.m., is that we won't be having any time to ride my bike anymore. And we've signed it both. I've blurred the name. We've signed it. He signed it. I've signed it too as part of the agreement. And so there he was, finishing his homework, doing his homework on time, that brings us to ride my bike. So uh, that quite worked, you know, a lot of times, and 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 for him to 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 be able to complete the tasks that we're trying to give him, you know, it's it. The trick is to to ask them of of. What are the things that would motivate them? Uh, uh, what are the things that would reward, you know, them complying to the task that we're giving him? And then, yes, he, we got it. So here's another example. I, I want to call it uh, uh, "Beach is Life." So, so in this, I I I love this this. Uh, uh, therapy that I have done with this boy. Um, he's 14 years old and he wouldn't ride on a plane. I mean, he he loves the idea of, of boarding the plane, but uh, every time um, he and his family would, would try to book for a trip, uh, it's either they would have to cancel the trip or it's either they they would have to uh, onboard the plane. It's because of of the behaviors, the inappropriate behaviors that is showing. Um, he wouldn't wait. He would ask for things, and he wanted it in an instant. Uh, he would just keep walking the aisle of of the airplane, which is not really allowed, especially. You know, you have to sit your bomb, especially if, if the plane's taking off and 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 uh, uh, landing. So, uh, we've done months of therapies before we actually brought him on board. So the mom asked me to take him on a trip. Um, I haven't been to Palawan, so I thought uh, uh, that time. I thought that that was the, the the best place where we can go. You know, it's a short trip. Um, he loves going to the beach, and and uh, so before that, 
you know, I had to think of ways on how I can actually make him uh, respond and behave in a way that uh, will have a smooth and pleasant travel experience. So since I haven't been there, uh, I have to Google and, and research and print some pictures. You know, I mean, I even printed pictures like this. It's the domestic airport. Let's say, for example, uh, the check-in counter, the boarding gate, you know, picture of the airplane, picture of, of, of Palawan itself. You know, I would even print McDonald's, you know, I mean, in case uh, it's, it's something that, that uh, he would choose as a reward. But uh, just the thought of, of going to Palawan uh, makes him behave in a way that, that we ask him, in a way that we set him. So it, it really motivated him a lot. And, and uh, uh, you know, he knows that uh, if I don't follow and if I don't listen to Teacher Mark, uh, I wouldn't be able to go to Palawan. So the mom sent me another therapist, him, and the caregiver. So if you see him, you know, we even, we even ask him to, to, to line up in, in uh, uh, the counter area. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, he would just tell the, the, the ground staff to, I want to go Palawan, I want to go Palawan. And, you know, the ground staff would ask him a few questions, what's his name and everything. We ask him to provide his, his ID. So, yeah, I mean, he kind of done it. Uh, next picture, if you can see him, you know, holding in the picture of the plane because, hey, you know, this is the next thing for me to do. I'll get on the plane. And under that, I mean, he has a lot of pictures. He's holding a lot of pictures. And, and the last picture that he's holding is the picture of Palawan. The, the island that we we've booked in and all he needs to to know to to do is to finish all those pictures on top and then he re we reach palawan so there he was sitting on the plane very quietly very beautifully and uh you know we didn't really have any issues he did never fast at all uh, you know, we landed Palawan. He was putting his vest on because we had to ride, take a boat, right, uh, uh, to get to the island. So if you see, he's holding the picture. He's close. He's one step closer to to going where he wants to go. He enjoyed it really well, and you know, and there, he enjoyed the beach. You know, he, he was swimming like. Uh, like he owns the, the entire world. So yeah, he loved it. In fact, he didn't actually want to go home. You know, he, he, he wanted to stay there. So after three days, we have to come up with another strategy using, the same, using pictures now going back home and, and, and making it contingent to a rewarding uh, activity for him to have, you know, for him to follow because that, hey, it's, it's, it's being rewarded. If I do this, then I will get this. So uh uh that's that's what i'm trying to 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 help you understand that uh, uh you know we use these pictures i mean real life pictures are the best although you know you can use general pictures you can download uh let's say uh pictures like like uh, animated pictures or what do you call that like a, like a communication pictures you know just to represent the activity and the rewards that, that you're going to use in order for you to establish that kind of contingency. Uh, so there are many ways. Uh, so why why are we doing this? Why, why do we need to establish the behavior consequence contingency, specifically using the visuals? Uh, so I mean, like, uh, uh, um, from what you notice, uh, we've come in succession you know we we we've discussed doing it verbally we've had uh, put out examples of uh written texts and then the last one is that we've used visual representations 
to to really kind of establish that behavior and consequence contingency the if and then first is that it creates learning so anything that uh, you ask the child to do anything that uh, uh, you demand anything that uh, uh, you set as an activity or a task for your child as long as it's rewarded right as long as it's contingent on on you know being reinforced he's gonna learn it he's, he's gonna master it for sure and again by by starting small and gradually building your demands higher and higher as the child responds consistently so there yeah he he would learn it uh, in one way or another uh and then when he learns course it provides us the opportunities to reward uh i mean it, it gives us a, a a joy feeling every time you know we we have to give a credit to what our child has done to to reward them with something that they 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 really like of course the reward is something uh uh that they would prefer uh so that that just sets the tone of of your house you know the child does something the child learns something that you're you're expecting them the way they need to and you reward it so you know it, it gives a happy tone uh inside your house in a relationship uh, with with your child it sets clear expectations again like what i've mentioned earlier uh you know i mean uh if you do this then you get this if you don't do this then you don't get this so it's as clear as that. I mean, I, I think it's a very straightforward uh, uh, concept for us to, 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 to really worry about. You know, it's not like uh, if you do this, uh, let's, say, let's say if you do this, and then let's say you throw a tantrum, and then you get this. So it's different. I mean, uh, it's not the other way around. It's not like, okay, you, I give you the iPad, so you don't cry i give you i give you let's say uh, a chocolate just for you to stop crying so you know i mean it, it doesn't really work like that why not we make it if you do this and then you get this so the next one it, it, it makes you in control it makes you as parents in control uh of the situation it's because your children will understand that the only way that I'm I'm getting these rewards is when I get to do this. The only access to me uh, having this one thing that I really like is that when I, I listen, it's if, if I follow the instruction, if I completed the task that mom or my dad has has set me to do. So so that's how uh uh the if and then contingency works so again uh, let's talk about a little bit of something uh, uh, when it comes to choosing the reward i think i'll be up on my uh, last couple of slides so how do we select the most effective reward first is we have to involve the child in the process you know i mean it's it's it can't be that we give him, let's say, an apple, and uh, he doesn't really want an apple. You know, he wanted something else. So uh, to reward a child is to provide them with something that they they like, not what we like. It's what they like. So you know, you can form it. You can offer choices. You can, uh, I, if you know your child, you can clearly identify what are the things that would motivate them uh and and keep in mind it changes from time to time so the, uh, the the more you ask them the more you'll be able to identify and and the more you'll be ready uh to provide it to them contingent again contingent on the appropriate behavior that you're that you have asked them or that you have set them to do 
you have to be ready with backups because again like what i've mentioned uh, on number one it keeps on changing you know what they like now they may not like it after five seconds you know they may not like it tomorrow you know they may change their preferences i mean you know i mean uh, so so you have to be ready with backup reinforcers with backup rewards so that uh uh you know you you can offer them uh you have to limit the access that's the third one um you have to avoid saturation because again uh what do you think your child would think if if uh you let them play for the ipad for example for the last two hours and then now you're gonna tell them okay i'll give you five minutes to play with your ipad if you do this and you know he might just tell that hey mom i just played with it for two hours why would i work for it so limit the access make sure that the only access for them with those rewarding items is through you through completing the task and uh, that's just it, you know? I mean, that sets the control as well. Number four is skip your word. You know, whatever you promised is that you have to give. I mean, like uh, for these kids, especially for these kids, uh, the promises are, are meant not to be broken. So I'm not saying that it's otherwise for us adults, but you know, I mean, these kids would really look forward to our word and and that's how we can we can make it effective the rewarding system is if we keep our work so again we involve them because you know we have to know what they like we have to be ready with a lot of backup reinforcers uh because it, it's gonna keep on changing from time to time we have to limit the access limit the access to keep the value of that reward high enough you know uh, you don't want them to overuse it because i mean it's just gonna bring down the value and the last one is that we keep our word so uh that's actually what this presentation is all about you know i i understand that uh uh it could be too tough i mean it's a big jump uh, not just uh, for the kids, because now they, they are not allowed to go out yet. Uh, even us, hopefully we will all do soon. So it's a big jump for these kids. It's a big adjustment uh, that they're facing. So imagine, you know, I mean, these five, six, seven years old who are not able to play right now outside, uh, you know, who are not able to see their friends and and you know just run around uh they're stuck at home doing their classes uh doing their homeworks and and yes i mean it's uh, on a positive note i mean it it's it's nice to have this time you know for us to really spend the time all together as a family uh but again uh, it's it's also a, a big jump for the teachers in school uh because i mean now that uh, uh they are expected to do uh online classes it's, it's something out of the traditional way of teaching uh so yes we want to give credit into them uh but uh, most of all we would like to give credit to to you parents out there uh staying home for your kids uh you know like trying to manage and 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 and, and have uh a harmonious you know like uh relationship on a daily basis we understand that it may be too tough uh um, to deal with these children you know who are not used to staying home 24 7. uh sometimes they just need to let it out you know run around the park go play with their friends uh you know laugh and and and, and play with with their classmates so uh, i hope that in this simple presentation that I made is that we really have to think on, on, on how we can make it easier for us parents and make it easier for the kids to just have that kind of connection 
uh, uh, to listen to our instructions, to follow uh, uh, whatever we ask them to do. Because, uh, I mean, I've got feedbacks from some parents, you know, like telling me that, hey, teacher Mark, uh, why is my son not listening to me? And then here you are telling him one thing and then he automatically listens. Uh, so again, uh, doing this, this uh, visuals, uh, doing this uh, um, reminders and, and establishing the contingency, I mean, it doesn't really uh, say that uh, this is the only thing that you need to do. Um, there's, there are hundreds and thousands of, of strategies and interventions uh, uh, that are known to be effective. So this is just, let's say it's, it's a supplementary, you know, an, an added uh, approach that, uh, that is also known to be effective when, when assessed right. So, um, you know, speak to your therapists, speak to your teachers, and, and uh, uh, work something out. Because uh, again, um, whatever I've discussed right now can be an added value uh, to make your intervention plan uh, very effective. So uh, these children, they have their specific needs. They, they have their unique and own learning styles. So, you know, there's really no recipe for this one. There's, there's, it's not a cookbook where, you know, we tell you that this is what you have to do and then it works for everybody. No, it doesn't work like that. I mean, we, we have to tailor fit a program for your kids. And uh, so whatever I've discussed for the past hour, you know, it's, it's just one way of, of the hundreds and thousands of interventions. And then and, uh, if you have any specific concerns, if you have uh, any questions, we will be happy to assist you. You know, you can drop a message to, to Sir Al or to the school. You can give Sir Al a call. You can give us a call. And we will always be here to, to support you in, in the best way that we can. So, yeah, and before I end this, I, I want to, to leave you with this quote that... Uh, I've taken from a movie, and it was, since I've heard this, it kind of gets stuck in me. Uh, you don't change the man to fit the narrative. Uh, the man would be referred to as the children. Uh, the narrative would be referred to as the environment. So uh, the environment would involve us as parents, teachers, therapists, and everyone that is outside your child. You know, the way we give them instructions, the way we present uh, uh, the rewards to them, the tone of our voice, everything outside them is part of the narrative, is part of the environment. So you don't change the man to fit the narrative, but instead we change the narrative to fit the man. So yeah, by putting out all these tricks uh, we're hoping that, you know, we can bring out the best in, in every child that we have, in, 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 in your children, uh, us helping all together. So, yeah, um, I think that that's, uh, that's the end of my presentation. And, and uh, I hope that uh, uh, I've shared something that, that can be beneficial in trying to deal with your kids at home. Okay, wow. Thank you so much, Teacher Mark, for that insightful talk. So we love the last quote that you shared. You don't change the man to fit the narrative. You change the narrative to fit the man. So that really aligns uh, with Hedwig School Forgiveness philosophy of child-centered instruction. So uh, catering to uh, uh, recognizing the uniqueness of every child and uh, uh, filling in uh, the unique uh, learning mold of the child. So we're not going to proceed to the question and answer portion, uh, teacher Mark. So we have a few questions uh, from our parents. Okay, so I'll be displaying some here on the screen as well for everybody's reference. Sure. So we have the first question uh, from Ma Melanie Tahayon. So the question is, how can we keep the optimism of our children when they witness bad or depressing moments such as this pandemic? 
uh, yes, uh, it, it's, it's very unfortunate that we're experiencing this pandemic. But uh, uh, it, it, it's equally, um, how do you call it? It's equally unfortunate uh, for us adults too. So what I could suggest is that, you know, you try to make activities at home that, that can not really replace that feeling of, of being uncomfortable, you know, during this pandemic, but at least to start something like what I've mentioned earlier, we start something small. You know, we don't want to expect everybody to, to just adjust uh, overnight, to just adjust in an instant and learn that, hey, you know, it's pandemic, it's the new normal, and we just try to live with it. So us adults are, 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 are suffering from this. Um, what more for these kids? So I think what I can suggest is that we try to, to you know, to, to create strategies. Like, for example, like we put up a schedule again using the visuals and uh, uh it's it's very important that we always consider uh the preference of your child the preference of your children the preference of everyone what they like because again imposing something telling them that okay this is what we're gonna do uh without really taking into consideration what your children want uh i mean that could be unfair for the child and you know i mean he might just be saying to himself that okay here we go again i'm stuck with the same situation that uh, i don't have any other cho choice but to follow so try to involve them try to get their ideas try to get you know what what their insights and and uh, once they start to feel that their inputs are are being valued their inputs are are taking effect so i think that's something that you know that uh, that uh, they can they can have uh, a, a different feeling to begin with. So again, don't don't be afraid to to experiment ways. Don't be afraid to 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 try out. It's a trial and error. So like what I've said, uh, you know, you can you can use a lot of visuals just to make sure that your child understands that hey, right now this is what's happening. But uh, if we try to do this. This is something that can happen too so it's like you know giving that if and then contingency uh for them to understand uh what other things what other better things they can do uh in spite of of what's happening outside with with, with the pandemic uh so you know just uh, uh get that uh, um, um small activity out try to 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 get their inputs because if they feel that their what they told you is being valued and what they told you is you know something that they can see you know it it, it boosts their their confidence as well that hey you know mom i suggested you that uh, uh i it was my idea let's say that that we as a family would play let's say a scrabble game or let's say a jenga and and uh it's it's my idea and you know and 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 then and i love it that we're, we're 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 all doing it so uh again to recap uh try to get their input as well try to get their preference ask them because i mean um um, um uh knowing what they like i mean it's it's it could be a little for us but it could be big for them Okay, so, thank you, teacher yeah, Mark. Thank you, thank we you. have a couple of questions here. Okay, the next question is, um, uh, we were advised by my child's OT to limit gadget exposure, but with the online class where everything needs the computer and gadget, I don't know how to reconcile that. So she has a seven-year-old kid with combined ADHD. Yeah, I wouldn't really suggest to cut off the, the, the gadget time because uh, I'll be honest. You know, like half of what our kids learn, more than half, even more than half, they learn it from the gadget. They learn it online. So as long as you limit the access, again, as long as you make it contingent to, I mean, setting aside the online class. I mean, the online class, uh, uh, by default, we have to be up online. We have to use the gadget. We have to, to, to be on the screen, you know, during the online class. But again, let's say outside the online class where 
where the gadget is being used as a leisure time. So again, uh, we'll have to limit the access. I'm not saying take it out completely. You can always provide it and take note. You can provide it contingent on the behavior, on the appropriate behavior, or, or let's say uh, the skill that you want them to do or to learn. So for example, um, okay, you, you, the, the, the gadget really works for you and, and you know, you, 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 it, it gives, it motivates you to work. So why don't we clean up your toys first? And uh, I'll give you five minutes of, uh, let's say, gadget time. And then, you know, as, as he learns that process, as he, as he learns that system, is that you can actually start to increase the demands that you are asking your child. You know, like, okay, clean up, like, like what, uh, the, like the examples that I've shown earlier, you know, there could be a series of tasks that you're asking and it, the, in the end, you're just pushing away the, 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 the reward, the reinforcer towards the end. So you wouldn't notice that the, the skill that you're really working on, on getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, you know, the child wouldn't really mind because again, uh, the child in the beginning, the child may be looking to the reward uh, itself, uh, but there's the process of, you know, of the gradual fading and the gradual uh, uh, thinning of the delivery of the reward, the delivery of, of the reinforcer. And, and uh, you know, until we reach a point where the completion of tasks itself is become rewarding to the child. So it's becoming natural. So, uh, Sir Al, I, I've seen the last question in here. Ah, no, no, not last question. I need, I've seen another question. Uh, where can I see that? It's about uh, uh, how can we shift from... Uh... Ah, yeah, we have it here. So yeah. wait a moment. The, the so, even then so I, I want to yeah. answer that because it's connected to the last question I've just answered. Can, can you... Can you uh, it show here. us again? Hold on, please. Uh, Okay, there you go. I think this is it. The if and then contingency and the reward after, do we always have to do that? Because our kids behave like every time we give them tasks, they will always ask what will be the reward after. Is that the one you're referring to, teacher Mark? No. Uh, um, how do we shift from, from like being a reward oriented to something uh, like uh, to something uh, here, here. here you go. Okay, there you go. From uh, me, Rak Yeah, uh, here it is. How would you, how would you shift the child to... from a reward-based behavior to putting emphasis on values and doing the right thing despite the rewards? So, uh, as I was explaining, in the beginning, especially in the beginning, I mean, this shouldn't last. In the beginning, we'll have, you know, it will seem that the child is, is working uh, for the reward. The child is behaving in a certain way because there's a reward uh, that's waiting for them. So that's in the beginning. That's when we are starting to teach them skills. That's when we are starting to build, uh, uh, um, let's say, skills for them to learn. So step by step. Uh, uh, like again, I'm gonna say it again that there is a process of fading. There's a process of of uh, of uh, making that delivery of your rewards further and further away. So imagine if you are teaching the child uh, to count one to ten. Uh, let's say if you're teaching the child to to copy words in the board, uh, five words. Let's say for example, the task is you you ask the child to copy five words to write five words and then let's say he gets a, he gets a break he gets to 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 have a free time five minutes so in the beginning it may seem that okay uh oh i i want to go for a break i want to go for a free time and all i need to do is to write this five so it seems that okay your child is not really doing the writing you know 
out of, of, of good faith, that he's only doing it because of the reward. Uh, and then let's say after a week, uh, your child learned that, okay, all I need to do is to write five. Let's say you ask him to write eight. Then he would still know that, okay, all I need to do is to add three more. I'm writing eight words and then I can get the reward. And then later on, you're asking him to, try to, to, to write 20 words already. So now, you're, as you push the reward further and further, bigger skills are being worked out. So not, in the beginning, you were just only working on five words. Now you're, only, you're, you're already working on 20 words. So imagine that skill that you have built. And at the same time, uh, the, 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 the completion of the task itself is becoming natural. So that's, that's the goal of the intervention. That's the goal of, of, of the therapy itself, is to make those responses natural uh, for, for, for these children, not to really look into to these rewards for them to, to, to move their bones. You know, uh, uh, we want to master, we want them to master the skill. And once the skill is mastered, you know, I mean, this, the, the, the completion comes out naturally. And, and uh, the, the completion itself is already rewarding for these kids. So it, 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 it may take a lot of progress. You know, some would even take years for, for these children to, to, to really see the effect of, of uh, uh, the, the, the right and, and proper uh, intervention plan. So uh, work with your therapist or with your teacher on how you can gradually fade uh, the delivery of the rewards and how you can start to generalize the skill, not only to the therapist, not only to you, uh, but to, to all other people as well. Because the, our goal is for, for the skills that we're working on uh, to, to be applied everywhere else. So not specifically to the ones who taught him or who taught her, but uh, to everyone else. So that's that's uh, where the application will start to come in. So, I mean, I, I hope it makes sense. I think this is also quite connected for the next question, Teacher Mark, yeah. to the ones that we have discussed. So from Mami Perdido, um, uh, regarding the APN then contingency and the reward after, uh, do we always have to do that? Because our kids behave like every time we give them a task, they will always ask what will be the reward after. Uh, it's it's kind of similar to the previous question. Uh, yes, in the beginning we always have to do that because again, uh, the the role of the reward, the role of the reinforcer is to teach, increase, is to increase, to maintain, and to keep the the skill that you want to work on. So, uh, let's say what's in it for a child if you ask them, okay, go go, uh, let's say. Uh, we want them to learn how to communicate to us, and we were teaching them to say, to say, please, uh, mommy, I want to have, uh, I want to have a cookie, please. So let's say that's the skill that you want to work on. Of course, the the best reward that you can give is to actually give the cookie after asking. So that's the same concept. Um, and, and, and again, uh, having that if and then contingency, uh, in the beginning, you, you see that one-to-one -one ratio. You'll see that uh, uh, one small task and then reward. One small task and then reward as you go. Because again, there are a lot of, of skills that you are working on. You know, having a, 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 the correct intervention plan, you're not just working on one skill. You're working on many different skills on the side. And uh, you may not see it in the beginning, but as you work with your therapist, as you see the progress during the therapy sessions, the skills that are scattered in your behavior plan, in the end, it's going to work all together. So we, uh, uh, like us, we want to work small. We want to start small as well. So we're taking out skills one by one, work on them one by one, and the goal is to put them all together. So, so making up a big skill. So in the beginning, uh, you may see it as, uh, as, as a child being driven by the, by, by the tangible rewards only. But that's just in the beginning. Again, having a, pro a proper and, and right intervention, 
you should have a proper fading program as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. Okay, I think uh, we have here another question related to rewards. Thus, uh, uh, here we go from uh, Daddy Bundalian. Um, is too much or does too much reward uh, have a negative impact for kids? Like they would always expect it on everything they do or not to do. Oh yeah, too much reward. I mean, everything that is too much is uh, uh, that I, I would say that uh, everything that is too much uh, really has a negative impact. You know, not just for the kids, for us adults too. Anything too much, oh, we have to be careful about it. So yeah, especially for the kids. Uh, if we reward too much, then again we are losing the value of the rewards. Let's say, if, if especially in the beginning, if if all you ask for your child a very simple skill is to give you a high five, and then you keep on rewarding and rewarding and rewarding the same skill, then you're one you're losing the value of your reward, and that other one is that you're not progressing the skill that you're working on. So. Uh, the, the right combination of, of uh, a, a great intervention is that uh, you don't want to pressure the kids too much too soon. You're just giving the right amount of demand. You're giving the right amount of re rewards, the reinforcer, uh, and that should go. That should progress. That should start to grow and grow and grow. One skill would lead to another. One... Uh, and and you know that reward will always be effective, and 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 the reward keeps on changing. The uh, the bigger the skill is, the bigger the reward you should have. So so you don't want to get, to ask your child to do something, and then let's say you ask the child to to let's say this happens, you know, in 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 as part of our culture, you know. I mean, I don't know now, but in the past. Uh, uh, you know, my, 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 my Lola would, you know, she would always come to my school and she would always expect us to, you know, to be on top of the class and, and, you know, as promised, uh, okay, you be, uh, on, 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 on the, the top five honors of your class. I mean, this was during my elementary days, you know, you be in the top, uh, uh, within the top five of your class. At the end of each quarter, imagine that quarter is for three months, and then you'll get, you know, a, 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 a gift. But let's say uh, it's something else. It's it's a reward that that really has no value. You know, what's in it for a child? I mean, and and I'd I'd like to 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 put it in a way that we as adults can understand too. Uh, would it really motivate us? You know to do something uh and and that it it has nothing in it for us you know that 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 there is really no rewarding effect on us and and uh, uh having mentioned earlier uh the reward the reinforcers these are the ones responsible for maintaining and keeping that that uh, behavior that 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 you know we we are expected to do uh, because it's it's rewarded in the past, so you know that behavior that that has been rewarded is more likely to stay in the future. Is more likely to to be increased and maintained if we face similar situation. So yeah, thanks for the question. Okay, I think we have uh, last two questions, uh, Teacher Mark. Uh, sure. We have here from Ma'am Precious Altamira. Uh, Sir Mark is aversive conditioning a one possible strategy to you to be used to a child who does not listen or follow to the parents. Well, um, I wouldn't really recommend hundred uh, percent. I wouldn't recommend the uh, aversive conditioning because again, it it just. I mean, uh, if if you apply uh, uh, an aversive strategy to your child i mean this will not teach them anything so let's say for example aversive is a form of punishment and and punishment's role is to bring down a behavior so let's say for example your child does not listen you let's say aversive let's say you try to pinch them or you try to hit them or you try to tap their 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 arm with a ruler 
uh, that doesn't teach them anything. You know, that only teach them that hey, you know, if I don't do this, I'll, 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 uh, uh, it will be painful. But uh, our goal as interventionists is to to really build a skill. Is to really reinforce the skills that we're teaching on. So instead of using the aversives, why don't we use the rewarding technique? So again, uh, in the beginning, you you may want to check on on uh, uh, what kind of instructions or what kind of, of statements that your child uh, wants you that that you want your child to listen into. You know, you have to consider, let's say, the level of their language, the level of do they have enough language to understand what you just told them? Uh, you have to consider the the level of their com comprehension. Do they understand what you just told them? Do they understand what what's gonna happen if if, if you know what are what 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 really is it that you're asking me from? Uh, you have to understand the level of of your control as well. So it could be that you may be asking for something that we that is not within his his level yet. So I don't know. We don't know. So that's something for us to look into. Uh, or it could also be that uh, uh, have you established that right kind of contingency, that rewarding system? Because again, I mean. Uh, uh, I don't really think that aversive. Uh, there's no way that I think aversive will, will, will work, uh, because first it does not teach them anything. Uh, we want to be proactive. We wanna we wanna know our goal. So once we identify our goal, then we should know uh, uh, how we can work it out. So. Um, um, Yes, I think uh, this is something that we can take a look into. Uh, if if uh, my question now is that if you apply aversive, does your child start to listen? Well, if not, mm -hmm. then uh, you know you should we start to reformat uh, 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 your program, your intervention plan with your child. Okay, so. Uh, we have two more questions, Teacher Mark, so maybe this will be the last two questions will be entertaining uh, before we finish the, the webinar. So Hannah, the first one is how to instill inner motivation. So yeah, uh, like like what I've, uh, because again, um, um, the rewards that I've mentioned in the beginning, although the rewards that uh, I have uh, uh, given you as examples, some of them are, are tangible rewards. But you know, come to think of it, some other kids, all they needed to to have is a simple high five. All they needed to hear is that, hey, good job. You know, all they wanted to see is that, hey, you know, my 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 mom and dad, my sisters, my 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 kuyas, my lola and my lola are clapping on something that I have done. So, so the more they get appreciated, the more they they feel happy about it. Uh, that's where uh, uh, they are starting to get that inner motivation, uh, because again, it doesn't. The reward does not mean that it always have to be tangible. Uh, right now, I understand that you know that that some most of the parents would say that na, you know they they spend most time with the iPad, you know they play a lot of video games. So it's 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 the tangible rewards, but uh, we we want. To take a look into other forms of rewards as well, you know, it could be a social praise, a, a little high five, a little uh, attention that you want to give to them, you know, a little tickle, you know, just give them a, a tap in their back, and they they'll be happy about it, they'll be fine with it. Um, so the more you do it, the more they feel happy about it, the more the skill becomes part of their. Uh, how do you call that? It, the more the more the skill becomes mastered, you know, it's becoming natural to them. So that's where the inner motivation would start to to come in. So, like I've said, you know, it, some some kids would take time for them to show that hey, you know, it's working. Whatever it is that you you're trying to do with me, it's working. You know, some kids you just want to be consistent and and you know and and go through a lot of 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 
process for them to really show that uh, uh, the, the 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 correct way of therapy is 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 taking effect on them. Okay, so I think uh, the next two questions are quite connected. So let's just uh, maybe I think we can answer them in one uh, yeah. answer. So we have here uh, the first one is. Uh, Regarding kids' reward after a task, I believe we also need to teach and to let the child or children know and realize their achievements and benefits from the task. In this, the child or children will be more encouraged to do more and to learn and to do something new. Uh, what do you think? So I think I this completely is also agree. I completely agree, Andres. Uh, uh, yes, I completely agree with you. And like what I've mentioned earlier, you know, as you build the skill, as you reward the skill more and more and 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 to gradually increase the tasks that you're asking and teaching them the skill itself is becoming natural to them you know it's becoming part of their repertoire it's becoming part of their skill you know something that you cannot take away from them you know it's not like uh, you taught them one thing and then they forget about it you know i'm um, building a skill uh doesn't just happen overnight you know, it's like trying to build their foundation. It's trying to build uh, 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 an entire child. It's it's you know, it's them wanting to understand, and 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 uh, how do you call it? to be instilled in their uh, let's call it personality. You know, like uh, 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 you know, as the skill gets mastered, it gets natural. So let's say we're we're teaching a child to to uh, uh, use their words to request for something. You know, let's say in the beginning, all the child was doing is to cry, to grab, to hit, because he knows that he's getting the things that he wants through those inappropriate behaviors. Let's say we're working on teaching the child to talk, to say, uh, something to request for the things that they want. Of course, we, we want to start small. We want to start with one word and then we increase it into a phrase and then we increase it into a sentence and then we increase it into a proper uh, back and forth conversational skill. So now that, that, that uh, verbal skill, that verbal behavior of the child is becoming natural to him already. So as he grows, he's going to take that into him. As part of him growing up that, hey, for me to be able to ask for the things that I want is that I have to ask. I have to use my proper words. I have to communicate. I have to talk. So uh, 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 that's uh, uh, that's how they benefit from it. Uh, but in the beginning, you know, you, you want to do it one by one. You want to do it part by part. So it's easy for us to work on. It's easy, easy for the child to take in. And in the end, all we need to do is just put them all together. And, and make it a big skill. Okay, so uh, we have here, uh, what possible strategies that we can use to our child without using a reward? So this is also quite connected to the previous question. And uh, maybe we can also ask this one, are all of these yeah. strategies applicable to all special needs children? Well, uh, I'll, I'll answer the first question first of Elena. Uh, the possible strategies that we can use to our child without using a reward? Well, uh, like what I've mentioned, um, when, when we say reward, it, it may seem, you know, that it's, it's, it's a toy, it's, it's, uh, it's money, it's the gadgets. Uh, it's, 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 it doesn't say, it doesn't really define that, those are just the rewards. Again, like what I've mentioned earlier, uh, the rewards could just be a little high five. You know, the rewards could just be, you know, a little uh, cuddling time with your child for five minutes. Uh, you know, it's, it's just a little helping them uh, with something that they do. So it doesn't always have to be tangible. It could be a social attention. It could be, you know, a little appreciation, like what I said earlier, a little tap in the back. That with other kids, it work. With other kids, it doesn't. So uh, the first thing that we have to do is to know our goal so we know what kind of reward are we going to use. So 
uh, in, in one of the slides that I've mentioned is how to effectively select rewards is that we always have to involve these children. We, we have to ask them. Uh, we have to take into consideration what they like. It's not, uh, a reward is not a reward is if we give it, if we give what we want them to have, not what they want. It should be what they want to have. So asking them, communicating with them, uh, 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 again, it, it changes from time to time. So um, uh, it, it may work. Uh, if, if you see that something is working, it, you're, it's because it's being rewarded. You know, you just don't think that you're using a reward. It may not be a tangible, but again, if it's not uh, tangible, it doesn't mean that it's not a reward. I mean, as long as it, it, it teaches, it increases, it maintains the behavior or the skill, the, the reward system is already happening. Uh, so the next question is, are all these strategies applicable to all special needs children? Um, I, I don't think so. Uh, uh, the strategies may... Uh, like uh, uh, like what I just said uh, earlier, um, there are hundreds and thousands of, of strategies available out there. Uh, if combined properly, all you need to, to have is, is the right combination, the right chemistry uh, uh, when it comes to the programming. Some kids, uh, I, I saw a comment earlier that... Uh, uh visuals are very effective to to their daughter so some kids all they need to do is for them to be told some kids you know would would be able to with a lever with with some kids that are higher functioning when it comes to the language you know uh let's say they'd be able to understand a written text as as uh, uh when you establish the contingency there are kids who would need the uh, uh, visuals, but again, I wouldn't say na na it it uh, it applies just to special children. These strategies may apply also to us, and and for typical kids, and for us adults too. And uh, behavioral intervention does not only work for children with special needs. I mean, I think that's a mis that's a common misconception. Uh, that when your child goes for for ABA therapy, is that uh, your child is a special need, or most uh, would say that your child has autism. No, I mean behavioral intervention works for everyone else. Works for us too as adults. I mean you've been using uh, uh, behavioral intervention is being applied to us uh, uh, on a daily life. We just you know don't know. The label for it, so you know, and and you know, I mean, we can laugh about it. I mean, some some of the mommies, you know, I mean, they they really have this this kind of trick, you know, and and have this special way of behavioral intervention to make their their dad is to make their husband, you know, do something that they want to do, or to keep their husband, you know, from from going out with their friends and everything. So I mean, you know, I'm trying to, to crack a little joke in here, but again, it's applicable for everyone. So it will be helpful for special needs, yes, definitely, uh, with the right way of, of uh, uh, combination of, of the strategies available on hand. So you better speak with your therapist, better speak with your teachers, and make sure, you know, that, that uh, the program that you have, the plan that you have, is tailored fit to what your child needs. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Teacher Mark. So I think it's a very insightful talk. So our parents, teachers also learn a lot and the, the community uh, learn a lot uh, from your talk. So for everybody's information, uh, Teacher Mark is the head of uh, our group social skills training program and is also a partner of the School uh, for Behavioral Interventions uh, for Children. So maybe Teacher Mark, uh, you can tell uh, the parents and our audience about uh, the group social skills training uh, program. So yeah, maybe yes. uh, you can both uh, help uh, our parents and your behavioral gonna, approaches. Uh, apart from the online classes, like uh, the typical online class that, that, that the child can have, you know, from, from their teachers uh, with the lessons and everything, uh, we're planning to hold 
uh, social group skills, you know, online as well. Uh, I mean, yes, it it it. Uh, you may have questions in in your head that okay, how can it be social uh, when it's via online? You know, like uh, we cannot uh, because again, if if we say social, sometimes the the what we perceive is that you know we play, we teach their children to play with other kids. You know, you you try to develop uh, uh, social behavior skills. You know, like waiting for for. for taking turns, waiting, and everything. So we're coming up with a program. And um, I, I think we, we can try to post it uh, at, at the, the Headway website or, or Facebook page very, very soon. We're, we're coming up with a program that will encourage and teach your child on how to, to socially interact uh, with other kids, not just to us, because again, uh, uh we don't aim to be with your kids for the longest time the quicker we fade the 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 more successful the program is so you know we're gonna have a little bit of uh uh turn taking games uh done online we're gonna have uh, a lot of activities that are meant for them you know I, i'll give you one example let's say for example we're gonna have like a, a short activity where they would try to 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 draw something uh that they like let's say you know we have a group of five kids uh at their com at the comfort of their house they're drawing and you know trying to show off some skills and, and talent when it comes to art and then we can have uh like a, a show and tell activity where one child would you know literally show and tell something about what he has done while making sure that the other child is waiting for his turn you know all along he's very excited to show what he has done so you know this kind of activities is something that we can we can uh, uh do online as well so we'll keep you posted with all the details uh we'll we'll present you with a program as well of, of uh, uh what are the things that we're gonna cover during this uh, uh group social skills training uh, being done online so yeah i'll, I'll be happy uh, uh, to, to, to facilitate and conduct uh, this, this uh, after school activities and uh, we, you should be getting the details very soon. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Teacher Mark. So we can also tap Teacher Mark if you have, uh, if you need some help uh, for behavioral interventions uh, for your child. So uh, Teacher Mark, we can tap Teacher Mark so we can contact uh, Teacher Mark and uh, maybe uh, you can also reach out through the number we posted earlier. And uh, we'd like to also like, uh, we'd like to share with you, Teacher Mark, also some comments uh, from your audience. So thank you and proud of you, Teacher Mark, for your passion, compassion, you. skill, and wisdom to touch the lives of children with special needs. Amazing, uh, amazing job. High five, Teacher Mark. So thank you, Sir Mark, for this informative webinar. Um, I agree, Sir Mark, as an adult, I apply some strategies of ABA to myself too. <laughs> yeah. For example, first finish dinner, then dessert, first do laundry, then go to the beach. Okay, thank you, HSJ and Sir Mark, for an informative morning. Thank you, Sir Mark, for sharing your expertise to us. Excellent. And thank you very much, Teacher Mark. This webinar is thank helpful you, everyone. and very informative, not only to parents, but also to teachers. So I guess... Um, uh, the community uh, very well appreciates uh, your talk uh, to them. So it's very insightful and it helped a lot uh, of uh, parents and teachers as well. So uh, yeah, if we need Teacher Mark's help, so uh, feel free to uh, uh, contact us for, uh, here on the banner for inquiries on HSG's group social school training. Call us at 0906-518-9931. We'll also bridge you to Teacher Mark if you need some behavioral uh, interventions for your child. And uh, we'd also like to share to everyone that enrollment of uh, Federal School for Giftedness for school year 2020-2021 is ongoing. For inquiries, email us at headway.school2002 at gmail.com or call us at 906 518 -9931. So thank you so much, uh, Teacher Mark, for your time today. Uh, Headway thank School you. for Giftedness appreciates and is, uh, to have you everyone. as our esteemed guest uh, for today. So any final words uh, to our audience uh, before we end the webinar? uh thank you thank you everyone and uh just as it uh, stay safe and you know i mean 
we'll get past through this. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. So we'll be ending the broadcast in a short while, so you can access the webinar anytime. So we're going to we're going to be uploading it on YouTube. Thank you so much, and have a great day. Thank you, Sarah.